Well, hey, my friend, welcome to another episode of The Thriving Christian Artist. I'm Matt, your host, and super excited to have longtime friend and incredible artist Robin Pop with me. Robin, welcome. Thank you. It's so good to be with you, Matt. Oh, likewise, likewise. I just, I love what you do and I love what you bring. And I'm just so excited to to have you on the podcast and just just share a little bit. So for those folks that are just kind of getting to know you, give us the, the rundown. Who are you? What do you do? Where are you in the world? Oh boy. You know, it changes by the day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> God is always doing new things, but um, I've always been a creative. I've always um, just I find my happiness making stuff. I've been trained as a cabinet maker. I've been trained as a painter. Um, but that's, you know, it's like every other art form. You just keep learning and learning and learning. Yeah. Uh, we have acreage in North Florida. We have a little farm. Uh, we still sell stuff off our farm too. So there's always, always more and more going on all the time. You, and I have teach a beautiful, too. you have a beautiful life. That's what you have. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but I, I have to say the Lord has really, really blessed us and um it's just a it's an adventure my my husband says it's like a roller coaster he never knows when we're making the next turn that's right that's <laughs> right now did you guys always kind of start out with that intentionality of life like wanting to have all that you're doing now or did you kind of fall into it or or came back to it after another <laughs> not living life the way you wanted to or how did that come out for you um we made a big life change to move to north florida and we were in South, you know, Tampa Bay area. And, you know, our, our kids had grown. We had one left still at home, but he was being homeschooled. And we thought oh, we're portable. We can finally live our dream and go get yeah. some acreage and have a little hobby farm. Well, God had a whole nother plan. And, um, this was like 12 years ago. Mm. And, um, as soon as we started selling a little bit of our farm products, it just, wow. people just went nuts for it. And, um, and that's been our main income for the last over a decade, wow. and uh, which enables me to be home, which enables me to, um, you know, we've scaled back a lot. And now I'm in the studio so much more and I can um, I can do more of the art. We I always wanted a farm and I always wanted to do art and and God's brought the two together. And um, and I I'm just so thankful for it. Yeah, I think we all go through those times of of looking at our life and like, is this the life that I want to be living? Is this, you know, the mm -hmm. time, am I spending my time the way I want to be spending it, my money, the way I want to be spending. I just love that you guys have found that, that beautiful balance that I, I'm sure people are thinking back now. She said she was a painter and a cabinet maker. Like how did, how does that even happen, Robin? <laughs> because that's like uh, on one side, you got to have math and, and like power tool skills. And then on the other side, you've got this intuitive color skill. So how, how did that happen? What, what, which was first? I, I guess I was a painter first, um, but I've always loved working with my dad. And he and I have done stained glass together. We've built stuff together, you know, all growing up. We, we just did stuff together. And yeah. I just treasure that time with him so much. And I still have my daddy. I just did an art show for him. Oh. We went down and, and he does jewelry. So um, he, he needed help and he's helped me so much. So I went and helped him this past weekend. So we're still enjoying that art relationship together. Yeah. And, um, but I think I was... I started out as a painter. I always thought that's, that's the track I'm going. That's it. I, that's who I am. Yeah, yeah. And I started art school and I just nosedived. It just, it wasn't, it, it, no part of it was fitting me and mm. no part of it. I just, I can't even describe what it was, except I quit after one semester and I was mm. done and yeah. I laid down the paintbrushes and walked away. Yeah. And I thought, okay, that's my whole identity now what do I do? Mm. And I lived close by a, a technical school and um, started, you know, we just, my mom and I kind of were sitting down thinking, okay, if, if art school's not it, right? you got other choices, what are they going to be? And I thought, you know what, I've always loved working with wood. I will just enroll in this, you know, technical school is program. And I learned how to make kitchens and furniture and I loved it, but I never saw the way the two could fit together. Yeah. I never, I never, I always kept them separate. They were always like, okay, you do that. And then I can do this once in a while. And then I'll do that. And I switch back and forth. But since being in your program, God has just 
woven them together yeah. in a beautiful way and they still are separate but together and um i can't i can't explain it except god put them together and yeah. so now i'm building instead of framing my paintings i'm building boxes and they go in a shadow box i add other elements to them sometimes they tell a story sometimes they're just quirky yeah. but um i'm building the boxes now it, it, in the beginning i was just finding things and putting them together but now i'm i'm actually recycling furniture i'm tearing apart pianos and violins and <laughs> recycling <laughs> so it's just it's just growing and i'm just so grateful well you know i i love the bravery and courage through which you express yourself. I mean, because it doesn't seem like you're limited by thinking, well, okay, I'm a fine art painter. I got to do it this way, or I'm a cabinet maker. I got to do it this way. Where does the freedom come from to begin to mesh and meld these things together into that unique expression? Because again, I think that so many times we have these preconceived notions of this, like for me, this is what a basket looks like, or this is yeah. what a whatever it looks like so did you have to go through like the ugly time of like well i think this is going to work but this is not going to work i mean what was that process like for you because you didn't just come up one day and make it making beautiful perfect things you know and the it work will keep evolving too but yeah. in um i think just play time yeah I, as an artist play time is so important um it just seems like every time i just you know throw caution to the wind and just play and just have like a day of just doing whatever I want to do instead of trying to fit it into something. Use whatever color you want, do whatever you want, paint on whatever object you want, just yeah. play. And then it's funny because those pieces I discount and I just kind of put them aside and then somebody will see them and go, oh, and I'm like, okay, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and there, I mean, there's new inventions that come out when you're just playing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm still, I'm still allowing myself that time to play. That's, I think too, that's the most precious time with me and the Lord when I'm mm -hmm. creating is just, just play. Yeah. Just have fun with it. Well, I, I love that you're recognizing it too. I, I remember you may have heard me say this the first time I put a basket on a stick or in, in some branches and people are like, Oh, it's sculpture. Oh. And I'm like, this is so much easier than what I've been trying to do. Otherwise, and It was a whole lot more fun, but gosh, people attributed a lot more value to it. And so it's learning to listen to the Holy spirit. I think in those, in those times, mm -hmm. right. And those kind of ding, ding, ding moments and like pay attention yeah. so that you can recognize what's happening in your journey, right? Yeah, pay attention to what your heart is doing at that time. Yeah. Pay attention to the peace that it gives you and pay attention to what other people are reacting to when they see that. Cause they can, I really truly believe that people sense the emotion that yeah. comes when you are sitting there putting that emotion into your work. That just, just comes right back out. Yeah. Um, I've done some horrible things when I was upset. <laughs> horrible but i keep them because they remind me of that fact that yeah. this emotion was being transferred when mm -hmm. i was doing this art yeah that's so good listen i know one of the other things you love to do in your art business not just making but you love to teach and transfer the heart and the knowledge i know you've been teaching at the john c campbell folk school for a long time and other classes we're so honored to have you again at gathering of artisans this year and so talk about teaching in general because i know that you you love to help give artists not only the freedom of expression but also the fundamentals that it takes mm -hmm. to really be able to to do what we do as artists yep i love it when i get newbies i love it when they are like oh, i don't know what to do it's like <laughs> good i can teach you stuff <laughs> good yeah i do a lot of teaching of plain air and um you know, landscapes and trees. And um, it seems like people struggle a lot with mixing greens. They struggle with, with uh, painting trees. So lately my classes have kind of been geared toward that because, you know, people are wanting that. Um, yeah. But I really, really enjoy teaching. My dad is a great teacher. And I think he just, you know, gave me that gift of being able to explain things and, and people get it and they understand. And just yeah. having the <clears throat> just coming beside somebody and say, it's okay. It's not scary. You can do yeah. this, you know, having that, that just that putting that peace in their heart that they don't have to be afraid. Mm. And 
yeah, you make ugly, you make pretty. It doesn't matter. You're doing something. It's a process, you're, right? <laughs> yeah, it is a process. You got to make a lot of ugly stuff first. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And I know probably from a business perspective, I mean, I teach this, but I do it as, as well. And as I was starting my art business, teaching is always a way to kind of help supplement the art making and all the other mm -hmm. things that you're doing. So that's probably a regular part of, of your income too, is you're building your own art business and, and ecosystem as an artist, right? Yeah. Like you talk about many streams of income, yeah. um, teaching, especially during COVID um, because, you know, everything was shut down. My teaching got shut down, but um, I was able to really um, dive in and develop new classes at that time and develop my own work in a different direction. So, you know, even though some of my outlets were closed up, um, just, you know, it was like, okay, branch out in another direction now. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think yeah. COVID was such a game changer for so many of us. I mean, that, and people that were, you know, ready with an open mind to kind of reimagine their business and how they could mm -hmm. reach their potential clients and that sort of thing. And mm -hmm. I just, I just did this basketry class the other day um, which, you know, I've been teaching baskets in person for years, but COVID and all that. And I just felt the Lord leading me to do this online basket class. And I recorded it and, you know, invested in having somebody come in and record it and all that. But I, I we were looking at the numbers the other day and I said, I launched this online course to everybody that's always come and taken to my classes in person. And I made over three years of revenue that it would have taken me to teach in person in a week of launching it online to people yeah. globally. And it was like, okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm paying attention and I'm thinking differently, you know, and I think we're all yeah. thinking differently about, about what teaching and, and what our business can look yeah. like. Um, if we'll just give ourselves the, the bandwidth to do that, you know, so. Yeah. I haven't gotten into that yet. I'm, I'm still, <clears throat> I'm still teaching mostly in person uh -huh. and um, I do want to, you know, do some more online stuff. I did some with you. Obviously we had a yeah. great, great course. Um, it just, it just seems like every time I think now's the time God says not yet. So, yeah, yeah. um, just, just waiting on that go. And, uh, but, but he has opened up more or avenues for me to go and teach in new places this year. I'm really yeah. excited about And of course, gathering. I know it. I know <laughs> it. So, hey, let's, let's talk about that. Cause we're super excited to have you back again. You're going to be teaching uh, some fundamental stuff, some also, well, as all include fundamentals, I guess, but also getting out in the bush, if you will, and, and doing some things. So what are the classes you're teaching at Gathering and what would a student uh, expect to come out with and experience during one of your classes? There? Sure. We've got three offerings. Um, and what, well, one is boot camp for color mixing, which is essential for, yeah. for any type of painting. I think it's so valuable to know what the manufacturers put in those paints and why they act the way they do and um, how you can control them. So that's that's the one really great class that uh, I like to start everybody with. Um, and they yeah, come so out we'll, with this like big grid, right? That did you this like a, a color map almost? Am I calling that the mm -hmm. right thing? Or it's a map. It's a cheat sheet. Yeah. Um, you know, once you've taken the class and you have the the cheat sheet map, um, then you can. Oh yeah, that's how we made that. Oh yeah, that's how I changed that color. Oh yeah, that's how I yeah. mix that black. You yeah, know, invaluable. and it it just stays with you. So it, it's you know, in my beginning stages of painting, I kept that nearby a lot because I wouldn't remember then, especially the names of the paints, they name them funny things in your yeah, exactly. what? <laughs> what, phthalo, P-T-H, phthalo? <laughs> know, how do you say that, phthalo? <laughs> yeah. So you're yeah, doing so that one, and then you're also going out and doing some some on-site painting as well, some plein air work. And... No. No? No, we're not. No, we are going to be in the studio this time. Get doing out. Landscapes. Yeah, Come we're gonna on, be, that'll be fun. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be great. It'll um, kind of take some of the uh, extra details of being, you know, out in the weather and trying to focus on just what you're painting. So we, I decided this time, I just wanted to do an in the studio landscape one where we can nice. talk about all and, and I'll treat it like we're outside, but we don't have to be outside. So it's, you know, all, it's the same painting procedure. It's just going to be um, from photos inside. So I yeah. think, I think that'll be a good one uh, for anybody that wants to learn how to do those trees and, you know, make depth in their painting and show that atmospheric perspective and, 
all those elements that go into a good painting. So that'll be the landscape one. And then we're going to do um, the third one is the trees where we're just going to focus on building a tree. And um, this is a new offering that I've just started this year. Yeah. And it's um, I've, I've taught it a couple of times locally. It's um, it's great. We, we talk about what makes a tree, a, the species, what, you know, how to identify you want people to look at that and say, oh, that's an oak tree or that's a, a cypress or, you know, you want to be able to have that much structure in your trees so that they look like the species that they're supposed yeah. to be. So we talk about how to build a tree. And I love your palm trees. Oh, my gosh. Like, I don't even live near the water, but I'm like, every time I see one, I'm like, I want to move to the low country. I want to move to the coast. But you, you just have this beautiful ability, I think, to like you're saying, to bring light and texture and, mm -hmm. and design into your work. So it's just, you know, I mean, people can see that are watching on YouTube right now, the two pieces that are behind you. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. But thank you. Talk, thank you. What's the difference in, in painting? Because I'm not, a, I'm not a painter. You know, I'm a basket maker. So I do a little cold wax, but that's completely different. What, mm -hmm. how do you approach plein air versus painting from a picture? Like, I mean, obviously you have all, the, like you said, all the weather elements and the light changing and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. But fundamentally, like, is it, you said it's the same kind of process, but you're, I'm sure you, you're fundamentally, you know, doing some things different outside than you would inside mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. The, the biggest difference is time mm. because the light changes so fast when you're outside. It doesn't seem like it, but it, you get two hours. Yeah. So, um, you have to be fast. You have to make those decisions faster when you're outside, which can be done, you know, yeah. it's, but it's the same process. You're going to start the painting the same way. You're going to use the same paint. You're going to use the same mixtures. So it's very similar. It's just got to make those choices fast. And yeah. there's tricks to simplifying that. And I think Gabriel Stockton's going to teach that. I want to take his class. <laughs> He's so awesome. We're so excited. He's coming all the way from San Diego to, to teach. Yeah. And yeah. Man, what a what a guy. So he's he just That's like you is getting a bunch of accolades right now and just just tearing it up out there. Awesome. So, yeah, you awesome. know, when I think about gathering I, I, and you know this because you've been there, it's just one class really can be a, such an accelerating factor in somebody's art journey mm -hmm. just to have the ability to be with a teacher like you who not only loves the Lord and knows how to listen to the Holy Spirit, but also has the fundamentals and the tips and tricks of having done this for years and years to be able to move somebody so quickly into success in what they're doing, as opposed to, to struggling with that. I mean, do you, I'm sure you see those aha moments all the time in, in your students. That's yeah. the fun part of teaching, isn't it? It is. It is. And the stuff that maybe I struggled with for years and, and figured out, oh, there's a shortcut. I get to give you that shortcut, you know, Absolutely. that's, that's always so exciting. Just, and for people that have mixed mud in their color mixing, and they're so frustrated, it's, I feel that frustration. I, I want to be able to say, Hey, there's, you know, here's the answer. Ta-da! Yeah. Here's the cheat sheet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Calling all mud mixers. We can make <laughs> that the top title of the podcast. Today. All frustrated paint mixers. We uh, have I know an answer. It, I know it. <laughs> Well, Robin, I love your story. I love what God's doing in and through you and just the convergence that you're living in and living a beautiful life. I know that folks are going to want to connect with you further, not only at gatheringofartisans.com, but also on your website and social. So where's the best place that they can do that uh, on your end? Um, Robinpop.com is my website. Constantly trying to get time to build more stuff on the website. <laughs> I need a course on just making a website. That's right. Anyway, the constant struggle, right? <laughs> the constant, yeah, the new work, old work, new work, That's old right. work. Um, so they can look there and uh, they can email me um, from there. And they can also see a lot. I post a lot of new stuff on Instagram and Facebook. So Great. it's Robin Pop Studio on both of those. Robin Pop Studio on Instagram and um, Facebook and RobinPop.com. And I'm assuming on Instagram, we can see the farm animals and all the other cool stuff that you're doing. I don't put that on there a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I That's do the a fun little. part of following you, though, on Facebook and seeing all that. I have this one chicken that keeps trying to come into my studio. I, I kicked her out. She was going to lay an egg in the corner yesterday. I was like, hello. <laughs> I'm arting over here, please. Right. Do do don't do that. <laughs> 
Well, Robin, it's a joy to connect with you. Thanks for being on today. And uh, guys, you. be sure to go to all the links that we give you here in the notes to uh, to visit Robin on social and, and join us at Gathering of Artisans this year. Yeah, and reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. You know, even if you're not taking my class, I love to talk to people about what they're doing and, um, you know, just, you know, talk about art. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. Thank you so much, Matt. We'll see you soon.